let's go to President Obama after the fiscal cliff deal has been signed. Well, he's going to let us know. Uh, as always, he had no choice, but next time it'll be much better. First, no choice. The fact is, the deficit is still too high. And we're still investing too little in the things that we need for the economy to grow as fast as it should. Uh, and that's why Speaker Boehner and I originally tried to negotiate a larger agreement. Unfortunately, there just wasn't enough support or time for that kind of large agreement in a lame duck session of Congress. Uh, there's nothing I could do. We ran out of time. And by the way, what he's saying is, if I had more time, I would have screwed you worse. I would have done a grand bargain, which, by the way, also cuts Social Security and or Medicare. Now, you think he's not going to do that? Mm. <laughs> How much would you like to bet? All right. First of all, will he negotiate the next time around with them when they say, hey, the Republicans say, we're going to hold this debt limit hostage. We're not going to let you raise it. Well, let's find it. As I've demonstrated throughout uh, the past several weeks, I am very open to compromise. I agree with Democrats and Republicans that the aging population and the rising cost of health care makes Medicare the biggest contributor to our deficit. Uh, while I will negotiate over many things, uh, I will not have another debate with this Congress over whether or not they should pay the bills that they have already racked up through the laws that they passed. Let me repeat. We can't not pay bills that we've already incurred. <laughs> that's a good one, Obama. That's a good one. Oh, you won't negotiate with them. Is that right? You'll just draw the line and walk away. Come on. Even if you're the most fervent Obama supporter out there, do you believe that? You don't believe that. Because that's what he's done every time. He had the same exact language on the 250,000 limit. Let me repeat. We will not be going above $250,000, okay? That is where the tax cuts end. Until I change my mind and I negotiate on that. But he's got an out here. He's going to say, oh, on the debt ceiling? I wasn't negotiating on the debt ceiling. I was neg negotiating over the sequester. That's, they happen to be at the same exact time. We moved the sequester to two months. And two months from now is exactly when the debt ceiling is. Yeah, no, no, you misunderstood me. Look at my legalese to get my politician Weasley answers. And by the way, if you notice in that answer, you talked about how Medicare is a big driver of costs. If you think he's not going to put Medicare and or Social Security on the table, you're crazy. But you are. But the thing is, if you ask liberals now, the ones that support President Obama, so-called liberals, they're like, no, Jake. See, there was no revenue side of this deal. I'm sorry, there was a revenue side and there was no spending cuts in this deal. Ha ha, we got you. Oh, he's not going to cut Medicare or Social Security, man. You're, you're, you're an emo prog. Whatever the hell that means, right? Like, oh, you're all emotional. Okay, great, 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 great. Uh, so you're on the record now. If you'd like to be, and if you think I'm wrong on this, if President Obama goes to cut Medicare and or Social Security, then you will oppose him, right? No, you won't. Two months from now, you will turn around and completely forget what you said today. And you'll come back around and go, he had to cut Medicare and Social Security. Jake, you don't understand. This intransigent Republican Congress, there was nothing we could do. The debt ceiling, what happened? I thought he wasn't going to negotiate about that. And the sequester, hey, wait a minute. The sequester takes half of the money from defense. That bloated, ridiculous defense uh, department that's just funneling money to defense contractors and not defending the country. It's just one giant pork barrel project. Well, half the money, sequester is good. Half the money comes from that. You think if they kill the sequester that they're not going to take more from discretionary spending? That's the whole point of killing the sequester. Take less from defense and take more from the rest of us in discretionary spending in Social Security and Medicare. So what you will do if you're an Obama supporter is that two months from now you will forget everything you just said and come back to me and say, oh, you're so emotional, Jang. We always knew Obama was going to cut Medicare and Social Security. It's to help Medicare and Social Security. Yeah, when I slashed your face, it was to help your face. I thought it looked better that way. President Obama continues. Uh, the one thing that I think hopefully in the new year we'll focus on is seeing if we can put a package like this together uh, with a little bit less drama, a little less brinksmanship, uh, not scare the heck out of folks quite as much. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. The Republicans have learned their lesson. You taught them a lesson, President Obama. And they know next time if they bring it all the way to the deadline, you'll give them at least 84% of what they want. Even though you had 
all the leverage in this one. Okay, and finally, if you think, oh no, no, President Obama, the defense cuts, he's in favor of the defense cuts, the sequester, if he has to keep the sequester, he's going to keep the sequester, right? Right, that's what you'd tell me. Now I'm being too emotional, obviously. Well, let's go to the debates where President Obama had something to say about the sequester. First of all, the sequester is not something that I proposed, it's something that Congress has proposed. It will not happen. It will not happen. President Obama is not going to let half the cuts come from defense. Why get it through your head? He is the establishment. He got to be in this incredible position of privilege through this system. He loves this system. He's not going to go against the system to cut defense and to preserve Medicare and Social Security. No, he just gave the rich giant tax cuts that he didn't have to give them at all. Well, what's he going to do next? Well, he's not done yet. He will cut Medicare and or Social Security, and he will preserve some of that defense spending, probably most of that defense spending, because that's what he does. That's why the nickname we've given him is the establishment. That's exactly what he is, and that's exactly what he'll protect.